You've asked for it, you got it. An entire episode dedicated to paperless caching. We cover the Mac and the PC on this episode of Ice and Rice Geocaching Video Zine. Hi there, and welcome to Ice and Rise Geocaching Video Zine. I'm Ice and Rye. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the show, welcome to the family. What this is is me and my video camera. I go out caching, film it, throw it together with a few hints, tips, and tricks, upload it to the internet so you can download and watch it to your own leisure. If you're a regular viewer, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate your viewership. So, what's new? Well, back in July, I had two weeks of vacation and I had a wonderful time. I did lots of caching and the highlights of the caching was my 500th find, the Palomino Cache in the Williams Lake area, located on a really great free riding trail. If you're a free rider, make sure you check out Williams Lake, they have lots of great trails. Also, I did a ton of training with my dogs, both Roxy and Abel, and at the end of it all was an agility trail where we got a chance to put our newfound skills to use. Also, I've made a couple new videos. One is Roxy attacking my sprinkler, and the other is a nice little agility video that I've thrown together with some music in the background. I enjoy them both, and hopefully you'll enjoy watching them. I'll have links to them on my homepage, and you can also get to them through my YouTube page. So I have a very special show for you this month. I feature paperless caching, and I have software for both the Mac and the PC. So let's get into the show. Let's start off with some geocaching news. So what's new in the world of geocaching? Well first, we have a brand new geocaching podcast and it's called Cachers of the Round Table, hosted by Daryl and Firefly of the Cache Maniacs. The show is a once a month round table discussion with geocaching podcasters. Now episodes are, episode one is already out, featuring Daryl and Firefly and Sunny and Sandy of the Podcaster Podcast. And they've just recorded episode two, which should be coming out in early September. And in a few months, myself, I'll be on the table as one of the panel members. We're comparing the show to TWIT. TWIT's roundtable discussion on technology, catches of the roundtable, it's all about geocaching. The only question is, who's going to be the John Dvorak of the group? Ha! Huh, ground speak. They know nothing. Ha! Huh, Icenride.com slash blog. Have a drink. So speaking of geocaching podcasts, there's actually quite a few of them out there now. Now we all know about the big ones like Podcaster and Cache Maniacs and the new one, Cachers of the Round Table. And there's a few others I'd like to mention. First off, I'd like to talk about the Granite State Geocaching Radio Podcast from New Hampshire. Hosted by Bash Chaz. Matter of fact, Bash just sent me this little sound bite that we're going to run here and check out his website. <laughs> Hello fellow geocachers, Bass Chaz here, and you may know me as the host of the Granite State Geocachers Radio Podcast, but I'm here to invite you to the grand opening of the Granite State Geocachers Org website. That's right, the GranitestateGeocachers.org website will be going online September 1st, 2007, and whether you live in the Granite State or not, I'm inviting you to come and join us, check it out, tell us what you think. That's www.granitestategeocachers.org. Come and join the fun. We'll see you on September 1st, 2007. So some of the other geocaching podcasts you might want to check out include the Geocaching Podcast, hosted by X Punk X, recorded live Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join them live at TalkShoe.com. There's Geotalk, 
What's happening down under with Spin Doc Bob? This is the Jersey Geocaching Podcast, a new and fun to listen to show. There's the main podcast, hosted by Caden Goddess and Khaki. Regular contributor Paul Conopaki hosts the Sliga Geocaching Podcast, all about geocaching in the St. Louis area. And the Twin Cities Geocaching Podcast, hosted by Surzy Men, streamed live on Ustream. So there you go, folks. I'll have links to all these shows in the show notes. And check them out, because uh, there's some really good shows out there and are quite enjoyable to listen to. In other news, there's a couple of event announcements. Coming up in August of 2008, we have Rendezvous Quebec 2008, which will be on August 2nd, 2008 in Quebec City, in honor of the 400th anniversary of the founding of Quebec City. So Groundspeak has issued a challenge to the organizers of this event. If they manage to reach the goal of 650 will attend entries, Groundspeak will grant them a mega event status. And this will mark a first in Canada. So guys, let's sign up. Let's see if we can get our butts to Quebec next August. In other event news, we have North Cumberland County Geobash No. 2 in Pennsylvania coming up on August 26th. So I know it's a bit short notice, but if you're anywhere in Pennsylvania, go check out the event. It should be a lot of fun. So lastly in news, I recently received this email from regular viewer Humphrey, which contained a picture he had obtained through... Well, he didn't exactly tell me what his source was, but he said it's a possible geocoin that could be coming out here in the near future and if I knew anything about it. And I took a look and I know nothing about this coin, I know nothing about it. So I've posted a picture of it up on the website and we're gonna show it here for you, the Geocaching Video Zine viewers. And I'm gonna be investigating this. It looks like it could be a fun coin. I might wanna get a hold of one myself. So stay tuned in the Video Zine and more importantly, keep checking in with IceandRide.com for more information on this mystery geocoin. Hey, that's about it for news right now, so let's give away some stuff. Let's go draw some names in the iTunes comment contest. All right, time to give away some stuff. Time for the iTunes comment contest. To enter the contest, simply go to iTunes and leave a comment for Ice and Rice Geocaching Video Zine. And your choice for prizes are either a season one and two box set or a choice of one four geocoins. Coins first come, first serve. So if you are a winner, make sure you get a hold of me by September 10th. Let me know your snail mail address and I'll get the prizes off to you as quickly as possible. Okay, so we have our draws here. Let's reach in and grab out a couple names. Our first name is Geocase. Congratulations. Next, we reach in. Let me pull out. GSGCR Radio Host. Granite State Radio Coast. Congratulations, guys. So email me, geoisenry at isenry.com with your prize choice. Unfortunately, Roxy is not one of them. I'm keeping her. Right, Roxy. Anyways, email me, let me know what your prize selection is, and we'll get it off in the mail as quickly as possible. And keep those comments coming on iTunes, I really appreciate it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's go check out some YouTube geocaching videos. What? What? Yeah, I like them too. This month I like to feature a pair of videos available on YouTube concerning geocaching. The first video is called The Good, The Bad and The Geocache from GeoWoman. What this video is, is the clue to a cache location. It's very similar to another video that I featured in an earlier episode where you have to watch the video to find out the coordinates to a cache location. And it's very well done and the cachers are in the San Francisco area. And this is one for cachers and she actually has a series of them that all use videos to tell you where the final cache location is. I'll have, again, I'll have links on my website. So go to YouTube and check them out. They're very well done and fun and entertaining videos. So next we hear from regular viewer Ran Hefner, who did a video on the Lake James Summer event of 2007. 
and he's done a couple versions. One is just a picture slideshow set to music and the other is an actual video. And they're both fun to watch and it's really great to see geocaching in other parts of the country and what people do. So again, I'll have links to both of these on my webpage. Go check them out. And if you have a video that you enjoy on YouTube or if you've actually uh, uploaded one yourself concerning geocaching, email me geoicenry at icenry.com and I'll feature it in an upcoming episode of the video zine. Well, that about wraps it up for the preliminaries. Let's get on with the main event. So one of the most requested segments is paperless caching. Everybody wants to know how to get into this segment of geocaching. While it's not all that difficult, all you need is a palm unit which you can buy on eBay fairly cheap and a few software programs, most of which are available for free. In this tutorial, I feature software for both the Mac and the PC and then I go into the actual Palm Pilot. Now the programs being featured for the Mac are Mac Caching and Mac CM Convert. For the PC, I'm using GSAC. And once it all comes together, I'll finally have my tutorial on CacheMate. A very useful, incredibly powerful program and well worth the investment. So sit back, grab a drink, relax, enjoy this tutorial on paperless caching. So welcome to Paperless Caching Revisited. If you remember way back when in episode 2 I did a tutorial on paperless caching using GSAC and a program called Plucker. Now that particular tutorial was for the PC only and since then a few things have changed. First off I now have a Mac, as a matter of fact you're looking at a screen right now. And I've become a big fan of another program called CacheMate. Now I've was using CacheMate back when I did the first tutorial, but I just started using it. I wasn't overly familiar with it. And now, after a year or so of using it, I've become a really good fan of the program. Now, for those of you that are still using Plucker, absolutely nothing has changed on it. So if you want to know how to use Plucker, just roll back to episode two. The tutorial in there works just fine. However, we're going to start with the Mac side of things. Now, for the Mac, the two main programs I'm going to use, one is called Mac Caching. And this is it right up here on the screen. And Mac Caching is the Mac equivalent of GSAC. It's a waypoint management program available for free as a download. I'll have the links on my website and it's a very useful, very powerful little program. Now, how do you use this program? Well, like uh, GSAC, you have to be a premium member of GroundSpeak. Go in, run your pocket query, which is, again, I demonstrated back in episode two. So go back, have a look. It really hasn't changed that much. Once your file is downloaded, simply drop the files in the Mac caching and you'll end up with a screen that looks very similar to this. You'll see up here a total listing of caches at 521. And those contain 500 caches that come through my pocket query and 21 what they call kitty caches, which are parking spots and trailheads and such. And you have various columns up here and it's all adjustable. As a matter of fact, you can't see where I'm clicking on view. You can bring up an options bar here where you can add different categories. And I see one that I don't have listed is distance. So I can click here, go on distance, click OK, and it now adds this distance file. And you can sort by distance. So anyway, so now we have our caches into our, or into our waypoint management program. What's next? Well, generally you want to put them onto your GPS. You simply type down, click down here to GPS. And I'll bring this up and I'll ask you whether you want to send your entire library or just a particular cache list. So if I only want to send the 500 waypoints without the kitty points, I simply send this. If I only want to sell it, send the parking spots, I click this. But in this case, I'm going to ship the entire library. Connection, mine's connected through a USB port. In the protocol, it's a Garmin. Now, this is a brand new feature. It's just been added to this version of uh, Mac caching. Is it'll export a cache mate file. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to have a look at that in the next segment of our uh, tutorial here. And if I had the uh, Palm software attached to this Mac, I could actually get it to uh, import directly to the Palm, but I don't. So we're just going to leave this unche unchecked for now. And also a really great feature about Mac caching is that you can use your actual, if you have an iPod, you can use your iPod contact list for your paperless caching. It'll take everything and download it onto your iPod. So anyways, we're just going to go ahead and click OK. And it's going to go off. 
Now, the first thing it says is it contains more than 200 caches. That's a throwback to some of the older older machines. My old Magellan, for example, could only hold 200 waypoints. In the case of the Garmin, it can hold 1,000, so 200 is not a problem, so we can just click on yes. And off it goes. So this takes a little while, so we'll just fast forward things and we'll come back when we're done. All right, so the waypoints have been transferred to my GPS receiver. And now it comes in and asks me, would you like to import these into the Hot Sync Manager? Right now, I don't have the Hot Sync Manager set up, so I'll click no. So now it's asking, where should the V card go? It's asking me for a name of the file to import onto my PDA. So I'm going to call it Mac Cache Test. Yeah, even added an X there for OS X. And click on save. So we've now uploaded the waypoints to our GPS receiver and we've created a cachemate file that we'll be able to download or upload to our handheld palm unit. So the next program I want to show you is called Mac CM Convert, which basically stands for Mac Cachemate. Now, where this differs than the CacheMate export function on Mac caching is that it allows you to export more information. It get, allows you to export uh, past log entries, which you can refer in the field for extra hints. So anyways, we're just going to bring that up here. And all you have to do is select your file. So this is our main, our main cache file, so we'll choose that. And here's where you have your extra bonuses. You can include travel bugs, containers, and we're just going to go ahead and click in everything. And then you have the number of logs to include. More logs than Mary, so just click on 10. It's just space. So we click all that. Now, again, we have a sent to PDA. Now, I don't have my PDA attached to the Mac, so we're going to click on the Save As. We'll come up, and then we'll just enter our name here. And away we go. And it tells us 500 waypoints saved and tells us where the file is. Quit there. And that's it. Now all you have to do is run a sync on your uh, Palm handheld. And these files will be loaded up to your cache mate and will be good to go from there. And I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But in the meantime, let's slide over to the PC side and we'll show you how to use GSAC and cache mate. So now we're working with the PC side. The most popular program for waypoint management with the PCs is GSAC, Geocaching Swiss Army Knife, which is available for free from gsac.net. However, after 21 days, you will be presented with a nag screen, as the developer likes to call it, and the suggested donation amount for the program is $25 in U.S. funds. Now, having used this program since pretty much day one of geocaching, I really believe it's worth it. It is a very good waypoint management program. So what do we do with it? Well, again, not much has changed since episode two. Go to gc.com, enter your pocket query. Once it's downloaded, you can just take the whole zip file and drop it right in the GSAC, as I've just done here. Hit OK, and away we go. So once your waypoints are entered, you'll be presented with a summary just simply telling you how many waypoints were added, how many what they call the child waypoints. Again, those are the, the parking spots and trailheads and such. Now again, the layout is fairly similar to Mac Asher where you have your, PC, your uh, GC code, your name, your terrain difficulties. Now, what can this program do? It can do a ton. And I can spend an entire show just on GSAC. And in the future, I'll get into some of the other features that this program is capable of doing. For now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we are just working on cache mate, paperless caching, and waypoint management. So once you have your waypoints entered, the next thing you want to do is send them to your GPS. Again, very simple. You simply click on GPS, send when waypoints, or if you have one of the new Magellan Explorers, you click down onto here. And they've just added uh, support for the allowance line of GPS receivers. Uh, Brian, I haven't spoken of much on the show before. It's always been either Magellan or Garmin. However, I'm starting to get a lot of fan mail from the Lawrence fans out there. So uh, I'd like to get my hands on one someday just to see what they're like. So what we're going to do is go to GPS. We'll go to send waypoints. 
And again, it gives you a variety of stuff you can do. It's a variety of uh, points you could add. And make sure you click on uh, the setup into your brand. My is a uh, USB, so I click here. It has a thousand maximum. Click on OK, and away it goes. So once that's done, you want to now set up the waypoints to export or import into CacheMate. For that, it's very simple. You simply go to File, Export, and right here you'll see where it says CacheMate PDB file. Click on it. So first it's going to tell you where to, to send it. And we'll just go with a, I uh, believe I've created a folder here, and we'll just put it into here we call it PG area August 11th 07 click on open so one of the things you can do with GSAC is customize the output and in this case you can build waypoint name by punching in a particular tag now again GSAC has a whole series of tags I'm not gonna go into them right now but if you play around with it you can set up your app you can set up your file just the way you like it again we have an install the palm after conversion again I don't have my palm hooked up right now so I'm just gonna leave that unchecked and here you have all your different categories you can include. Again, I just like to put in absolutely everything. Click on Generate, and off it goes. And it tells you 521 waypoints converted, and it's all done. Click on OK, and then you can exit GSAC. And that's it. So now your next step is to run a sync on your Palm Pilot. So now let's go fire up CacheMate and see what to do with all this stuff. So you've run your pocket query, you've used your particular waypoint management program, you've uploaded all your waypoints onto your GPS, and you've created your cache meet files, and then you ran a sync on your handheld unit. So now all the data is on the unit. What comes next? Well, the first thing you do is you run cache mate. Click on the little flag there. Now, when you import data into cache mate, the first thing it's going to do is come, come up with this category, this uh, screen. Select Import Category. And I'll tell you the name of the file. Now, this is PG Area August 11th. So, this is the file that was generated by GSAC. And I'll go through and I'll import the files from the different programs so you can see the similarities and differences. Now, database, that always goes to default. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. However, for category, you have all these various categories founds, not founds, owns, unfilled, and edit categories. Now, if you want to get picky, you can go into Edit Categories, and you can actually create a new category. I'm going to call this one PC Caches. Click OK, click OK, and then say that you want to put this, this file into the PC Caches, and click OK. Away it goes. After it's done, it tells you everything was all merged together and you're good to go. Press OK. So once you've imported your data, you'll see a screen like this. It has the name of all the caches in alphabetical order. Now it goes, it'll come up with quotes first. So any cache that has a quote in the side of its name will come up before anything else. Then of course you have your numbers, then again to your conventional 27 letter alphabet. So let's just scroll here at random and let's just pick a cache. Let's say pick north to Alaska. Click on it and it'll bring up the first screen which is info. It tells you the name of the cache, the category it's in, the type, the, G, the gc.com waypoint name, all your difficulties and your coordinates. From there you can click on description. Tell you the name of it, when it was placed, where it is, And this is the description. It's the same thing that you read on the GC.com web page. Hints and log. We're going to skip for now. You can go to past logs. So you can see when it was last found. August 7th of this year. And each time you scroll down, it brings up a new log entry. And here's my log entry from way back in 2004. The nice thing about GSAC is when you convert files for CacheMate, it'll actually add a number of log entries and then it'll put your own in at the end for caches that you found. One to use with caution is Overview. Because what Overview does is it gives it shows you the info, the description, and it throws the hints in. So if you want to read everything, including the extra hint, 
Then you go straight to overview. Because as you can see, here's all of the info screen. Here's the description screen. And when we get down to the bottom, here's the hint screen. So the two I didn't talk about is the hint screen, which is just the hint by itself with all the other stuff. And then finally is the log screen. And this is where CacheMate really earns its keep. Once you get to the cache site and you've found it and everything, you simply click on here for found. And what we do next is you click on mark time. And I'll ask you, mark the current time as the start or end of the hunt. I always click on start. And you click on that and it'll automatically insert the date and it'll automatically insert the time of when you found the cache. Now down here, it gives you an area to enter notes. So you can say took, well I took something left something else travel bugs if there's any travel bugs and then down below there you have an entry to make a regular cache entry spelling mistakes included so when you're done click done and then that's it now if you go up here to your categories, you go down your found categories, you'll see where it has North Alaska. It's now listed in your found categories. So what's next? Well usually with your GPS receiver you can do a search for geocaches from where your current location is and it'll tell you where the nearest cache is. Well CacheMate can actually help you do that. Simply open up the cache you're at, click on CacheMate, and you can click down on where it says nearest caches. It enters the coordinates for where you are. Click on OK. Category. Since we're doing the PC caches, we'll only pick the ones in that category. You can put a distance, the maximum number of records, but there's only 500, so it doesn't take that long to sort. And click on OK. Now it's going through and sorting out all the caches and it's computing the, computing the distance. So this tells you that the closest cache is the Canada theme cache. And next to that is my key to a good cache. Well, that sounds interesting. So we'll click on that, go down, waypoint name, how far it is, where it is, and degree. And all this is from this point. So click on go, and it takes you to that cache. And again, it's the same thing. I'll show you the hint for my cache, the description. And all this information is in there for all the caches you've entered. So, you've gone out, you've done your day of caching, and you get home. So what do you do then? Well, I actually just discovered this feature about CacheMate myself, but a really great thing is when you go back to your found category, you can simply click up here, and where it says down here to export logs, you can export all the memos to the memo pad and then you can put in a category which might help you find it later you simply click yes it tells you that one cache log was exported to the memo pad click OK now the next time you sync your PDA with your computer one of the things that synchronizes are your memo pads and anything that's been entered on the PDA will now be downloaded onto your computer so when you go to the gc.com website the log you find if you typed in something interesting, you can simply cut and paste from the memo pad directly into your log entry so you don't have to type everything all over again. That is a really great feature of CacheMate, and that's what finally convinced me to go with CacheMate full time. So just a couple other quick little things here. Let's go back to where we have all the caches. This is a really useful feature down here where you can have it sorted by name or sorted by gc.com waypoint. Now if you click on waypoint, it comes up and it just comes with all these names. It doesn't really seem fairly different. There's a little trick you gotta do. We go into here, click on the cache made tab, go all the way over to option, and where it says list options. If you click this one here, it says when sorted by waypoint, and uncheck that. Well, we can leave it checked or not. It doesn't really, it doesn't. I leave it unchecked. My personal PDA actually isn't color. But anyways, I digress. So you can click on OK, and voila. All sorted out by the actual waypoint name. 
often you'll hear people instead of saying, oh, I went to a cache called Boulder Blast, they'll say, oh, I found a cache that was GC12TXW. And you go, huh? <laughs> so now they're all sorted out by their geocaching name and number. And again, it's very easy to find. So that's basically CacheMate in a nutshell. Really great program. I really enjoyed using this program. And it's definitely worth the money you pay for it. Last time I checked, I believe it's a whole $8 US. And the program has come in handy many, many, many times. So the one last thing I just wanted to show you was getting back to the Mac programs. If you remember, I was saying that Mac caching will create a file for CacheMate, but it's not quite as detailed as the Mac CacheMate program. And I'll show you what that looks like. First, we'll delete the records. So we'll start with Clean Slate. So we have absolutely nothing in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is import the Palm database from, this was from Mac Cacher. And I'm not going to bother creating a category because it's going to be the only thing in there. So again, you're seeing the 521 waypoints, just like we had before. And again, you have all the names up here. But where the biggest difference is, is past logs. There are no past logs. Also, it doesn't decode the hints, but that's really easy to do. You click decode, and there's the hint there. We'll remove these records. And we'll import the file from the CacheMate for Mac. Now, this one, I didn't bother adding the child point, so it's only 500, as opposed to the 521. But again, all alphabetical order, very similar to what you saw with the GSAC program. You can click on the details, and this has the past logs. But the hint still stay decoded, or encoded. But again, you have your decode button, click, and it's done. So there you go. Tutorial on CacheMate and various waypoint handling programs, both for the PC and for the Mac. So now you're all set up, no matter which kind of computer you have, unless you have Linux. In which case, if you have Linux, write me, because I do have a Linux box, but I haven't quite figured out Ubuntu yet, and I'm still learning. So I haven't done too much to it, but I guess it could be a future project. However, if you're on a PC or a Mac, you should be pretty much good to go for paperless caching now. So get on eBay, get yourself a cheap Palm device, go get your programs, pay a little money to the developers because they've put a ton of work into these programs and they really do deserve something for it. And uh, go out, go get them, cash on. So there you go, easy as pie. Now anybody can get into paperless caching. And at this time, I'd like to thank Daryl W4 for giving me some temps on the Mac side of things. But anyways, that about wraps it up for this episode of Ice and Rice Geocaching Videos. I hope you enjoyed. Just before you leave, a few more quick comments. Make sure you hit iTunes, leave a comment. I'm going to run the contest for another, another couple months because I still have some coins and the box sets are pretty easy to make. And also, if you upload a video to YouTube, let me know, and I'll feature it on an upcoming episode of Ice and Rise Geocaching Video Zine. And also, if you have a video contribution and you actually like it featured on the show, let me know, and we can make arrangements on how you can get your video to me. Anyways, in the meantime, and in between time, that's it. Another episode of Ice and Rise Geocaching Video Zine. So until the next episode, cash on.